Welcome to CEO Unplugged. Today I am sitting down with Keith Paring, CEO and co-founder of FUBU. Yes. Welcome. Yes. Now we're going to go back right away. You guys founded this brand in 1992. It was you, Damon John, Alexander Martin, Carlton Brown, and yourself. Right. All from Hollis, Queens? Yep. Right Childhood right friends? Childhood friends. I have a lot of questions, though. I have a lot of questions. I, I, I was watching a lot of the footage because I wanted to get to know you know you as a person before right. you came here. And I saw that nine banks refused to help you guys. No, it was like 27. 27? Yeah. Oh, like 27, wow. 27, 28, something like that. And what was that? You guys were asking for business loans? Yeah, we were asking for business loans to get the, get the brand off the ground. Um, and we just couldn't get there. <laughs> they wouldn't give it to us. I think well, we have enough credit or whatever it was, we couldn't get there. So um, we used our own money to put into the business. And okay, so eventually it was no bank. You used yeah, your own money. We used our own money. Wow. And then uh, Jay had gotten into a car accident. So when he came home from um, from the service, he gave Damon like, like a couple thousand dollars, like five or six thousand dollars, and we started working it again. And just started. We stopped and started this business about five or six times. That's amazing. Now, who was really the driving force behind? Like, we're not giving up. We're gonna make this happen. Cause you know, there's always like, I'm that person that be like, this is never gonna happen. I, Which one of you was the one that was like, nah, we gonna make this pop? Mr. Damon John. Yeah. He's like the motivator. <laughs> <laughs> because you gotta realize, like, we we were doing this from like '92. Like, all of us were doing it from like '92 to '96 with no checks. So, I saw that. That's another thing that I wrote out. I, I was like, they went, what, four years yeah, with no pay? With no pay. Just and you guys had to, regular jobs. Yeah, we had regular I jobs. I saw Damon talk about he was working at Red Lobster. He was working Where at were Red you Lobster. working? I was a property manager. I used to manage um, 200 unit, a 200 unit complex um, Section 8 low income family housing Ooh, project. That's a lot of drama. And, uh, All the yeah, people yeah, coming to you with 20 problems. 22? 20. 20? I got the job when I was 20. Did yeah. you live in the building? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Nah. You know you get a free apartment. You know the yeah, super, nah, the property manager, nah, they get a free apartment. Nah. He's like, nah, I'm good. I'm not living They'll with these people. They'll be knocking on my door all night. <laughs> I wasn't with that. So that's what you were doing? That's what I was For doing. the whole entire four years that FUBU really wasn't like taking off or, yep. or, or monetizing just mm -hmm. yet. Yep. Then what was the moment where you were like, this is going to happen? We, well, this is going to pop? You know, we used to do this thing called the Black Expo, this event. Okay. The Black Expo used to come around every yeah. year, and we used to travel with it. So if it was in D.C., we would go to D.C., we would go it. to Atlanta, wherever it was at, we would try to go if we had the bread. And then... um. Was it? Was there like key items you would take with you? Yeah, it was just it, we only had two items. You only had two items. <laughs> what was it? It was the FB shirt, and then it was a uh, our signature shirt. It's like this patch right here with okay. Fubu in it. You know. It, wow. It was just those two shirts, and we had a couple of hats, and that was it. But we didn't realize that we were planting seeds until Boy, we got you? our deal. Because once we got our deal, the um the consumers just ran to the store and bought everything they could because they you, couldn't find it. When you say we got our deal, what does that mean? Um, we got a deal with Samsung America. Okay. They finally came in and, you know, we were looking for financing and uh -huh. that was the company that we went with. Okay. Now, how does it feel knowing that you guys were like one of the driving forces that catapulted, you know, the whole like urban fashion to spread the way it did all over the world? Oh, it feels amazing, but you know, we didn't really, we never really felt like we were the driving force. Until, Why like, did you did after, not feel like it was happening at the yeah, moment? Yeah, like it was just all a blur to us because we were like, okay, this shit is only gonna last three years. Uh -huh. That's it, okay. and we got to figure out how we can get all our money in three years so we can move <laughs> on to the next project, take the money and do something else. Not only till we started making like three hundred fifty million dollars a year, we we're like, okay, well, we have to come down from three fifty, like, and it's not gonna come down that quick. Yeah. And we started to develop overseas um, stores. We built like 200 freestanding stores overseas. Wow. So that helped us a lot in, in giving, you know, longevity to the brand. Um, but we, we just never felt like we were the catapulting force until like later on, like years later, when people used to come up to us and be like, man, you motivated us. And, you know, so then we start thinking it was more of a movement than just a clothing company. It really did become a mm -hmm. movement. You know, it's crazy because it's like some people reference to you guys as like an R&B group of like no, designers. It <laughs> and it's like, I see the footage and I'm like, I remember this. Like they really were out here like uh, yeah, doing the damn thing like, and we, making $350 million a year. I yeah. would say you could do a whole lot. Now, it was crazy. The, the, the time I felt like it was really crazy is mm -hmm. when we went to um, the BT Awards and we got out on the red carpet in yeah. LA. And 
people started crying and shaking. The girls That's crazy. started crying and shaking. I'm looking at them like, girl, you make clothes. <laughs> I don't sing. I don't dance. I don't do anything. I just make clothes. Like, why are you crying? Like, I mean, when That's I mean a dope crying, feeling, I mean shaking. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> but yeah, it was it was like an R&B group because everywhere we did it, we we did it big. Like we do parties. Um, we do the best. We did the best parties. We would take over a club, put our name on the club, yeah. like just do all kinds. Yeah, it of was. It was things. a. It was like a, a lifestyle. It was like yeah, it was a more whole, like a lifestyle. whole entire movement. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is um, Fubu definitely influenced. You know, the likes of Tommy Hilfiger, Ralph Lauren to go mm-hmm. urban. You know, even the Aaliyah, mm-hmm. the whole thing with Aaliyah and Tommy mm-hmm. Hilfiger. It's like, did you guys know immediately when it happened? Like, oh, they took from us, or only did it that come to you later on no, down the I, line? I, I honestly think that. Tommy Hilfiger was a little bit urban uh-huh. to begin like with. Ur- yeah, because okay. you know he he was touching certain people like Grand Pooba and all these other people that were wearing his clothes back then. Um, so he was already touching the culture. Yeah, you know it was just wide open for somebody else to touch it too. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So you know we always say you know cross colors look through the peephole. You know, it's crazy. I, I just I just copped a cross color hoodie like yeah. two days ago. Well, I got to send you a Fubu hoodie. And I was just like, <laughs> why is this here? And why am I able to touch this? And why can I buy this yeah. right now? And I picked it up, and I was like, this is crazy. It just yeah. it brought me all the way back. Do you have kids? Yeah. What do your kids wear? Like, do she, they have she, specific? Yeah, she wore Fubu all, pretty much all her life. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. You know, have she had all like, the exclusives? Yeah, all the exclusives. Does and... she put you on to different brands? Like, Dad, this is it. Like, this is what um, I love and this is what I wear. No, she just lets me do me. She knows I'm I'm a little fashionable. Well, myself, yeah, I'm so. pretty sure you you yeah, probably she, schooled she her on all yeah, the fashion. Yeah, but you know, kids, that. they always bring us like the new music, yeah. the new clothes. That's the only reason I ask. But let's talk about, you know, what you guys have coming up. Like, what you mm-hmm. what are you working on right now? Like, the present. Ah. Uh, so I'm gonna start. I ain't gonna start right. What what, what we got com, coming up Friday? Let me start a little before that. Yeah. So Jay got forced by his network, his TV network. Okay. That we're working on. Um, Carl is building, is, is working on building one of our first hotels, Hotel Fubu. Oh wow, where's um, that gonna be? Do we know yet? Not yet, not, not yet. yet. Okay. We're you know teetering with a couple of places. Um, I know the last time we were talking, it was is it like in America? Baltimore, yeah, in the Baltimore, oh, okay, okay. Maryland, um, area, and then we were talking about Brooklyn and Harlem. So. You know, we're, Give it to we're us. still working. Give it to us. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I started Fubu Radio uh, in 2015, so that's doing really well. I'm reaching about 200,000. What's Fubu Radio? So is it like you own the radio station and then you yeah. give people shows? Mm-hmm. I produce all the shows. You and, produce all the shows? Yeah, I produce all the shows. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you have a show? Not yet. I'm going to jump on. I think I'm going to jump on. Uh, you need to. One of, one of, one of my, um, my personalities, Chris Childs, we talked about doing a show. So, together, yeah, we're gonna do a show together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my eyes open. I want. I don't know. Holla. I'm, I'm gonna be strong in a minute. I'm telling you, <laughs> coming for everybody. <laughs> and what do you have going on Friday? And what we got going on Friday is our exclusive launch event with um Century Twenty One. Okay. So we designed um like ten different uh, SKUs for just for them, um just for that one. Store. What kind of pieces are they? It's just hoodies and t-shirts. Hoodies and t-shirts, yeah, okay. Just Exclusive doing, for certain yeah, Twenty One. Yeah, okay. We're just doing a test and, uh-huh. and see how how it's received and. All four of us will be there and signing autographs. Oh, that's and dope. Before you're going to be yeah, there? Yeah, we'll be there. That's really, really dope. And, um, I got to pass by. We got a bunch of stuff that we're giving away. And with a purchase, you get to meet and greet us and, you know, that's take super pictures dope. and everything. So. Right here in New York. That's right the, here, the one right, right, right there by the World Trade Center. Yep. That's one train stop away from me. So I might, right, um, well, come through, come I might just pop out on you guys. Now, I want to bring it back a little bit more. Um, uh-huh. FUBU, for us, mm-hmm. by us. Who came up with the name? And who said this has to be the name? Like we don't like who said we need something for us? Like we not we're not we're not which I believe we're still very underserved when it yeah. comes to our culture, mm-hmm. our clothing and, and black owned. Yeah, yeah. Who came up with that concept? So we were sitting around the house and uh I think Damon picked up the newspaper and was reading the newspaper and one of these companies said that they don't wear their they don't produce product for the urban kids. And we all had on this product and yeah. we were like why would why would they say that like we got they're making something. they're making a ton of money you know and then I'm, I'm gonna tell you the name it was it was Timberland mm-hmm. they didn't want people you know the black boot. kids wearing their boots yeah and we were like okay well we took if, that over forever yeah never. but <laughs> if you know no disrespect if a white person wore your boot he's gonna wear one boot for the next 10 years we're gonna buy three a month so yeah. like we why consume you, differently. Yeah, we just consume differently and once it gets scuffed up, we need a new pair. Yeah, so 100%. it was like why are you making 
hundreds of millions of dollars off our back and now you you say you don't want us to wear your stuff after you've made all this money yeah. from us so it was just like a slap in the face and then um somebody yelled out like we well, need to make some stuff that's by us for us you know for our culture yeah. and, and then we were like by us for us it was like oh that's cool you know because we were already looking for a four letter name so yeah. we were like boofu <laughs> nah nah that ain't nah, gonna work boofu ain't it that ain't gonna work <laughs> so we were like all right let's uh Let's do uh, for us by us, and, and it's stuck, and it's amazing. It's like fubu, kind of sounds like it's, you know, Asian or something, yeah, yeah. but it's not, you know, African, and so we were like, all right, fubu, and we just went with that. And you know what's crazy? It's like a lot of the stuff that I do, um, even even like I have a podcast, and it's called Life in Spanglish, and I was like, this is for us by us. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like I've used it throughout my whole entire career. And I've nah. always kept it like very in the back of my mind that everything we create has to be but yeah. for us, by us. And then yeah. a lot of people don't think about it that yeah. way. And then, I mean, like we didn't really use the acronym that much because mm -hmm. we didn't want people to feel like this was a black line for black line for black people. I saw because that. Because when we first started, we were selling overseas, mm -hmm. you know, to Japan and Seattle, Washington okay. at the time in the 90s. I saw that Japan is like one so, of the first places that yeah. like really embrace mm -hmm. the brand, being mm -hmm. that they love hip hop culture, mm -hmm. like so more we, than we do sometimes. Yeah, so, you know, we didn't want to do the same thing that Timberland did, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were like, it's, it's not only for us, it's for our culture. Yeah. So when we say for us, by us, it's our culture because, you know, this hip hop culture, we, we're the only ones who take a... A, a certain fit and just turn it into, a, you know, yeah. make it us. You know what Swag I'm saying? Swag it out, yeah. You know, we were we were wearing like ski jackets in the hood. Like nobody even knew how to ski. That's true. We had the Haley Hansen. <laughs> Haley Hansen. We had the Nordica. Yeah. We had the Polo yeah. full entire mm -hmm. like ski. And then nobody ski. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we were going to school with, with that on. So now things have changed a little bit since 1992. Mm-hmm especially with the digital age mm -hmm. that we have going on all around us. Now, how do you guys plan on pushing the needle forward to bring FUBU back like to its original glory? Like, Well, I'll tell you a crazy story. When um, we decided, we started getting a lot of messages from our consumers like, hey, I bought everything off of eBay. Yeah. I bought everything from my cousin and them. Um, I even went to all the thrift stores I can't find anymore. Can yeah. you please come back out with stuff? So we were like... I that's one person, you know, yeah. and then the, the messages started coming like tenfold, and we were like, and that came all through social media. Yeah, it came all through social media. But the funny thing it was, we only had three followers, and it was me, Carl, and Jay. <laughs> on what? On social media? <laughs> on social media. Our Facebook was looking okay, but yeah. Instagram was like three followers. So I just took it over and yeah. I started working it, and, and it. I started responding to the people, yeah, and yeah. then I started getting engaged on what they wanted, and then. We were like, okay, if they really want it, if they really, really want it, we're gonna spoon feed them a little yeah. bit and see and how it works. Capsule collections are always really good. Yeah. It's it's a really good way to like feed people things yeah. without so, mass producing. Yeah. So we did we did um, Crepe Man in Japan first, then we did Pata in Europe, and then we brought it out here to Urban Outfitters, and then from Urban Outfitters we went to Puma, and then from Puma we went to Mitchell and Ness, and then last summer we were like. They ready. <laughs> they ready. So we're excited to release this, but we have a whole lot of other stuff in store. Like this is just exclusive capsule that you can only find on Century 21. Mm -hmm. Nowhere else. No other store will have it. And we're kind of working the e-commerce side a little bit better than we were back in the days because um, we don't really want to be in a whole bunch of stores anymore. Not only that, people consume differently. Yeah. I went to a store the other day and I felt so strange. Like somebody was talking to me and I was looking for <laughs> sizes and I was just like, wow, like I really haven't shopped in a store in a yeah. year. It's like things have changed. I shop sometimes on Instagram where it says shop now. Yeah. I'm like, okay, shop now. Yeah, and when that's... I went to the store, I was just like, this is strange. And nah, everybody, why are people asking me if I need help? Every Everybody does that now. Like, you, you know, only people like... Like my wife, she's a, she's a little curvy, so she's like, I can't shop online. I, can go to the store. I, <laughs> I need to try my fit. stuff yeah. on. Yeah, nah, I don't blame her. <laughs> you know, because she, you know, she I just return like everything. I'm like, okay, this is going back. This didn't fit. This this is this is going right back to where. When, when you want something, you want it to fit. You want to, you know. You got, I, I I I won't tell you the brand, but there's a brand I've been wanting to buy, and the jeans were like 150, and I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to Nordstrom first. I'm gonna see which one fits, because I'm not gonna be buying two and three hundred and fifty dollar jeans and sending them back. Yeah. But now that we're talking about brands, you know, behind the scenes, we were talking about um, brands not hitting the mark when it comes to like 
minorities, black and browns, mm. you know, brands like Gucci right. facing all this backlash. Why do you think these brands miss the mark? Why do you think they make these particular mistakes? I, I couldn't tell you, man. It's about, it's about 22, 23 steps before you get to that finished product. So unless they just ha don't have the right people around them or people don't want to speak up and say anything because they didn't lose their jobs or whatever, yeah. I don't know how they missed that. I, I don't know how there's there's too many steps. There's a there's a sample step. There's a pre-production step. There's a you know presenting to your peers and everybody looking at it and seeing if it's. That's you good know. that you're explaining it the, the way yeah. that by the time they sell something on a website, yeah. you're telling me there's 23 steps. It's 20. It's about 23 steps. It's it's you know then you got to go through. Um, once you go through pre-production and you get the samples back, then you got to send the samples around and you talk to everybody and get their opinion and. It's just a lot of steps, and you got to send it out to the media and all that. All this stuff, stuff can like, be avoided and yeah, caught. It can be caught. It can be caught. It's just, you know, they're trying to push the button forward. And, I mean, obviously, I was told yeah. that it was a popular design that everyone was doing. Yeah. So that's how I guess they got caught up in it, being that they would, you know, snatch it from the trends and seeing what was coming down the pipeline. And this thing came down the pipeline that they felt like, oh, this is going to be the next big thing. Bloop. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now, two other brands that are still around and have been, um, you know, for the past like what twenty years, are um, Diddy's Sean John mm -hmm. and Jay Z's um, line. Mm -hmm. They both, I feel like, when I go to Macy's, I'm like, oh, yeah, look I, at this. I'm Rockwell, surprised. I, I don't even know Sean how. John. I go to Macy's. I'm like, how the hell are these brands still in yeah, <laughs> Macy's? And they are still in Macy's. Years. I did a, a grand yeah, opening of good. a Macy's in Brooklyn, and there was a huge Sean John section, yeah. and I'm like, get out of here. I hear that both Diddy and Jay Z kind of like sought consultation or kind of like spoke to you guys before well, putting out their lines. You know, is that true? Not Jay. Not Jay. Jay, you know, Jay, Jay is Jay. Yeah. And he's a little more confident, a little more flat. Well, him and Puff to me are really fashion new cats. They really are. So when they came out and said they were dropping the line, I was like, all right, fellas, push the button, <laughs> push the gas pedal. We gotta go because these guys are coming. But no, Puff came up to the office and we sat down and we talked to him because I, I think they saw us. It was like, yo, how y'all getting all this money from from clothing? Yeah. You know, I remember L saying that, like, we getting money like this from clothing when I gave him his first check. Yeah. But Puff came up just to consult with us. And it was funny because we was like, hey, Puff, like, you might want to name it something different. Not your name. Sean but John? Like, yeah, like something else this by Sean though. John. And I never forget, my boy, he was like... I'm an icon, baby. His name's Sean John. And I was like, hey. And then when that thing happened with J-Lo, mm -hmm. we were like, damn, we hope his brand doesn't suffer. Like, you know, because we be yeah. rooting for each other. Like, I don't know how many people root for us, but we root for other people. Like, that, that we do. Without without these other brands mm -hmm. that were out at the time, we couldn't have been as big as we were. So when just department stores would come and say, who do you want to surround yourself with? Yeah. Go get Rockaway, go get Sean John, go get Pure Players, go get this one, Mecca, go get that one. Yeah. Like, we would tell them who to get the surround us with because we weren't fitting over here with Polo yeah, and Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah. We wasn't in that section, so we had to kind of create our own section, and that's where the urban department came from. Like, they, they just made a department for us, and that's how it came about. And here we are. Here we are. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with me. Thank you for having you me. You have some really amazing stories. That was Keith Perring, CEO and co-founder of Google. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of CEO of Thank you. <laughs>